Something you may not know if you only discovered my channel recently is that I have been making design advice videos on YouTube for way too long. <laughs> I started my channel back in 2013 when I was barely three years into my design career. I have come a long way since then, not only in terms of making videos, but in terms of my design career as well. And I thought that it might be fun today to go back and watch some of the design advice I was giving eight years ago. Do I still stand by it? Would I recommend something different now? How cringy is it to see myself on video back in 2013 and 2014? So I'm gonna pop my headphones on and we're gonna watch some of my old design advice videos together, including the very first design advice video I ever uploaded, which is now on private, because that is one that several years ago I did watch and decided it was way too embarrassing to be public. Now you're gonna see it. All right, <laughs> let's get into it. Okay, we're gonna start with a video titled Design Advice, Developing Your Style, which I uploaded on the 20th of April in 2014. My old intro, which looks very similar to my current intro. Hey guys, today I wanna to talk about some design advice. In case you're new to my channel and didn't know, I'm a designer and I like to talk about design every now and then. Okay. <laughs> Does anyone else feel like my accent has changed? I feel like my accent sounds very different in this video compared to how it sounds now. <laughs> Avoid automatically applying your style to a project, but rather let each project or assignment influence you and your work. I would agree with this still. And I think that's the perfect way to explain it. So I agree with everything I'm saying here, but what's interesting to me is that these days I feel like I just wouldn't make this video and I'm not sure even if this is still a question that people have. I think with the rise of like, um, well, user experience design in general, I guess, people are more aware of the fact that you need to design to fulfill the brief, not to design to serve your own like artistic and creative needs. Perhaps this was more of a conversation back then and it was something that more people were worrying about and thinking about. I don't know, if you're earlier in your design career, is this something that you worry about still? Because I feel like it was obviously on my mind and on my audience's mind at the time. Okay, we're gonna get started with this one called Design Show and Tell, Motion Typography, Charlie Marie TV. And I uploaded this on the 19th of March, 2014, as this is not an advice video at such, but it's more me talking about my work, which is something I still do today. I still share projects with you and talk you through how I did them. So I'm curious to see how I used to do that back in the day. Thing that I wanted to do. Because I am quite a visual person, sometimes when I listen to a certain song, I can like see the lyrics moving in my head. That Still might be crazy, happens. but this piece <laughs> I'm going to show you is actually me trying to capture that. This video I made combined three of my great loves, motion type, typography, and Fall Out Boy. I knew I was going to say that. I video for Fall Out Boy's song Saturday, which is a song that is very near and dear to my heart because it's the one that they always play to close off their shows. So for this project, I designed all the typographic layouts in Illustrator first and then brought them into After Effects to animate them. I went with a blue, white and black colour scheme because that is the colour scheme of the front of the album. Let me just grab that. And I oh, know lovely. you guys know how much I love the Lost Type Co-op already because I always seem to mention them in my videos, but all the fonts in this piece are ones you can find on their website. I went for quite a grungy, vintagey type look because I felt like it really suited like the punky vibe of the song. And I also oh, punky, huh? And I shaking of the camera in time to the music because I really wanted to try and- I was really proud of that, you know, actually, about figuring that out in After Effects, the like camera shaking thing. I used to be way more into motion graphics than I am now. And watching this, I kind of feel a little bit sad that I wouldn't currently know how to do it if that makes sense I'm good to go and I'm going nowhere fast that is a lot of shaking working in music videos used to be a dream of mine and I feel like this uh, animation project was sort of like my attempt at it as I look at it now I'm like yeah, I can see many, many ways this could be improved, but it's not bad, you know? It's not good, but it's not bad either. And I do remember learning a lot through the process of it. I remember someone saying once that um, if you're not somewhat embarrassed by work you did like more than a year ago, let's say, then it means you're not like learning and growing enough. So I'm gonna call the fact that this is a little cringy a win. <laughs> Okay, let's get into an advice video now. This is one called Design Chat, Should You Work For Free? And I'm very curious to see what my past self said about this and if I would still agree with her. Today I want to talk to you about something that I think is really important very serious. to my opinion on. 
and that is the subject of designers being asked to do work for free, which is something that's also known as spec work. This is something that especially speak affects work. young designers who are just starting out. Often they'll be approached by a company with an opportunity to do a piece of work, normally a logo design or a poster design, something like that. And if the company likes their work best out of all of the other designers who they've asked to work on it, then they'll be paid. But if not, then they get nothing. This just isn't how the design process should work. Still agree. Still hard agree on that. I think to get the best results, the designer and the client need to work together on a brief so that the designer can ask questions and show the client proofs along the way, and that way they can reach a final design that everyone is happy with. As a designer, you should have a portfolio that shows your work, and the client... <laughs> this is funny. So yeah, this is how I used to record my videos, was a little microphone that attached to my iPhone. We've come a long way, now we have this um, whole shore set up, but yeah. <laughs> should be able to look at that and talk to you about their brief and then decide that they want to hire you. That's how the process should work. I firmly believe that designers should be paid for the work they do and I'm not just saying that because I am a designer, I think that well. everyone should get paid for the work they do. For example, Fair. you wouldn't go to four different restaurants and have a meal at each and then decide afterwards which one you like best and which one you're going to pay for. Chefs and restaurants obviously would refuse to work like that, so why on earth is it expected of designers? The more I get the point I'm trying to make here, but I don't think that's a very good analogy anymore because obviously in that scenario, you've eaten the meal and you've like gotten something out of it. Whereas um, you might not have used the design that someone created in spec work. And so, yeah, therefore, what would I compare it to today? Maybe it's more like a coaching call. I don't know where you're like using someone's time, you're hearing their ideas, you're getting their advice and then you're deciding which coach you're actually gonna pay for the session. Um, yeah, that's maybe more similar to what spec work is, where it's a bunch of designers giving you their ideas, showing you how they would approach things so that you get a bunch of different options to choose from before you go ahead. Either way, I do definitely still agree that it is not a good way to operate. The more spec work designers do, the more people outside the industry think that that is how it works. And True. it's sort of up to us as designers to end that thinking. I know from experience that as a young designer starting out, it might seem like you have to do work for free in order to get an in to the industry, but honestly, if a company is asking you to do a project for free for them with the promise of maybe a possible job at the end, is that really the sort of company that you want to be working for? One that puts so little value on design? I think it's about being smart and she keeping right. your eye out for situations where you think you might be being taken advantage of, because it's probably important to note here that sometimes, especially with bigger companies, they might ask you to do a little design task as part of the interview process. <laughs> that's funny that back then it was like, maybe that would happen. Whereas nowadays it's like, no, no, yeah, that's, that's going to happen. <laughs> They'll be doing this just to see how you handle a brief and how you work under pressure, things like that. But if the project they're asking you to do isn't one that will actually be used by the company and it is just a test, I think that's fine. It's really about knowing the difference between those situations. And if you're not sure on it and an opportunity has come up, why not consult with someone who has got more experience than you just to sort of sense check it and make sure you're not being taken advantage of. Hmm, that advice about like just ask someone what they think. It's maybe not so useful these days because it assumes that everyone has access to someone that they can ask this advice from. I still agree with most of the advice I gave, but these days I would probably try and expand on it um, a little more and give people more advice on what they could do instead. But still. Not bad past me, not bad. Okay, this next one is gonna be a little bit meta, but we're gonna react to me reacting to my first ever design portfolio. Hey guys, a while ago when I was visiting my parents, I rediscovered my old portfolio that I used to apply. Oh, I forgot to say, this one is called my old design portfolio, cringe. <laughs> at university. At the time this was obviously good enough because I did get into my course, but I feel like the standards for design are so much higher these days for getting into university and and these days I feel like they're probably even higher, so this is a little bit concerning for what we're about to see. I do remember some of what's in here, but one thing to note that's interesting straight away is that this portfolio is an actual book that I printed out and had bound. I've got this custom like page ender on it. As you can see back then, I was also using purple as my main brand color. <laughs> the first project is something from my final year of high school, and I was doing it on this band I'd made up and doing all the graphics for their CDs and posters and merch. Okay, some context. Um, this was 2006 when I made this project and when I made this portfolio, because that was my last year of high school. I was obsessed with any type of like pop punk music, and basically I tried to make every single project that I did 
into one that related to music. And so yeah, for my final graphic design project in high school, for this band that I made up and I got my boyfriend at the time and some of his friends to model and pretend to be in the band um, so that I could get these cool photos that I could edit and make the shadows green apparently. <laughs> okay, let's take a closer look. Merch, things like that. So this is the CD design that I did. The band was called The Out Crowd and I don't know, this is not too bad to be honest. I remember working quite hard well. on this. Up next we have another graphic that's to do with music because that's what I was obsessed with and I kind of still am. Yeah, it, okay, still am today. Let, let's be honest. Is this Fall Out Boy lyric graphic. I think I remember this being one of my first experiences like playing around with Photoshop. Obviously, pretty cringe. There's some... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, speaking of pretty cringe. What's, it's so interesting, right, that something that was my one of my first ever experiences playing around in Photoshop, I can remember working on this on my family computer that was upstairs in my parents' room because um, I didn't have a computer of my own at the time. Obviously, that wasn't really the dumb thing when I was in high school. But yeah, the fact that something that was one of my first several explorations ended up in my portfolio that I was applying to a, you know, pretty good design degree with is it just, yeah, the standards are definitely higher these days. Terrible fonts in there, but the sentiment Very terrible. was there and playing with lyric graphics is something I still do to this day. This next piece is some of my photography work because when I started university I wasn't actually sure yet whether I wanted to do design or True. photography. This is a piece from my final year of high school wow. photography boards. My work that year was <laughs> kind of creepy as you very emo is how I would describe this. <laughs> We're shifting mediums for the next piece and it's a painting that I did. Back in the day I really loved painting on canvases and it actually still hangs in the spare room at mum and dad's house. Ne mum and dad have moved now and I'm not sure where that painting went and now I'm wondering slash realizing that it was probably just like akin to a parent hanging their kids like really crappy drawing on the fridge that my parents actually put that up in our guest room. <laughs> This next one is one that I am not proud of and I remember I wasn't even proud of it when I put it in my workbook but my art teacher had encouraged me to do something that showed drawing with a bit of shading and different textures and materials. I, I remember this! I struggle with this so much! So as you've noticed probably so far this design portfolio doesn't have a whole lot of like what we would consider design work today in it. There's no websites, there's nothing digital really, like all you saw was that <laughs> shitty album art and then the uh, shitty Photoshop graphic. I mean this was a portfolio to get into a course to like actually learn design but still I don't know I just feel like the standards would probably be a little bit higher these days. But yeah my art teacher encouraged me to put in something that showed more like creative expression through drawing and I thought I was terrible at drawing and I had a big hang up about it and um, still at this time in this video I was still had a hang up about that. Now I kind of realize that you don't have to be great at you know getting things to look perfect with uh, a pencil and paper in order to be a designer. I know that what's important is being able to communicate your thoughts and uh, you know that not everything has to look perfect in order to be good if that makes sense. But yeah I didn't realize it at the time so this was the, the picture that I drew and Honestly, I think I'm being a little bit too hard on myself. It's not that good, but it's not that bad. Okay, I feel like I've delayed long enough. Let's go in now and watch my first ever design advice video. So this one called Studying Design Tips for Coping with Project Handins was uploaded in October 2013. One of the first videos I ever recorded, I think I recorded it straight after I did my first ever like channel intro video. So this is me very fresh to being on camera. Let's see what advice I gave. Okay, wait on, where are my eyebrows? <laughs> Why are they so thin there? What was I thinking? Okay, okay. Hi guys, I'm Charlie, and as you may or may not know, depending on if you watched my last video or not, I'm a designer. Oh dear, I'm just trying so hard. It's very sweet, like my heart goes out to this girl who was like just wanted to do this new hobby and do it well and be good at it and so I think in like in service of that I just ended up trying trying way too hard with it and uh, not sounding like myself honestly. I'm like who is this person but we'll, we'll hear her out. I did my studies at Massey University in Wellington and I know it's their hand in week coming up soon so I'm here today to tell you a few things that I wish I'd done differently during hand in week when I was at uni. 
So in case you're, I don't know, in case things work differently wherever you are, because I know that now compared to back then, I have a much more global audience. But Hand in Week was like the one week at the end of the year where all of the projects were due together. It was madness. You felt very overwhelming as a student and you felt like there was just so much going on and you couldn't get it all done. And uh, yeah, this video was my attempt to give advice to the students at Massey who were currently in that situation. I hope that if you're a design student, either at Massey or anywhere else in the world, you might find this helpful. And if you're not, how about you just keep watching anyways? Firstly, try to get some sleep whenever you can. I know that it's really difficult and that you feel like you should be working on your project 24 seven and that whenever you're sleeping, you're not doing your projects, so you're not working hard enough. Well, that's how I felt anyways. But trust me when I say that there's not many things more useless than a sleep deprived brain. Tying into that. Oh, that was it. That was the first tip. Okay. Yeah. I mean, fair, get sleep. Good advice. Don't hit the caffeine too hard. I know that coffee and energy drinks make you feel like you can stay up and keep working for ages, but when you've had too many, when you finally do get to sleep, you're going to have a really restless night and you're going to wake up and be just as tired as when you went to sleep. Try to eat proper meals. I know that taking time out of doing your project to cook dinner or to prepare yourself some proper breakfast is really annoying but it's much better for you to get energy from your food than from coffee and energy drinks. You don't have to cook fancy gourmet meals or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, no just one's going to. with some sustenance. <laughs> I, think I remember, I just had a flashback. I remember finding it so hard to say something with some sustenance and I recorded that clip so many times. Yeah. If people offer you help, take it. Mm. You don't have to struggle through this alone. And this is something that I was really bad at. I was so proud and stubborn and I just wanted to do it all myself until I realized sort of at the last minute that that just wasn't going to be possible. Luckily, I've got an amazing sister who's yeah. able to step in and help me out. And I know that all of you guys probably have friends and family members who just want you to succeed and they're going to do anything they can to help. So if they offer, let them. Yeah, this was a big lesson for me. And honestly, something I feel like I still have to keep learning is to like let people help you when they offer. But I had many breakdowns, as I'm remembering now in the closing stages of my final project at university. Oh gosh. And lastly, when your project's all handed in, make sure you celebrate because you'll deserve it. Oh, okay. I know design school can be really stressful and challenging, but trust me when I say it's worth it in the end. I hope some of that was useful for you guys. I'm sure you've heard it all before, but sometimes it just helps have a little reminder. If you liked this video, make sure you subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And if you've been through design school and have any other tips to share, make sure you leave them in the comments down below. I'll see you next time, guys. Bye. <laughs> I just want to give my past self a hug. I'm like so proud of her for like everything that's happened since then and for putting up with this bloody awkwardness to get to where we are today. That's sweet. Overall, I would say I still agree with the advice I was giving, that um, I agree with the sentiment behind it at least, but that these days I would try to clarify more, try to give more detail and to be more specific with the advice as well. I don't know, I can imagine these days if someone watched a video that just was like, I don't know, eat good meals and sleep or something, you'd be like, that was a waste of my time. <laughs> But that last video in particular got 59 likes. It's had uh, 1,781 views before I made it private so that no one else could watch it again. And yeah, like I said, it was kind of the start of everything and, and why you're all here now watching this, it wouldn't have happened if I hadn't made those very cringy videos. Hope you enjoyed this little walk down memory lane with me and seeing some, yeah, very questionable fashion choices and eyebrow choices and accent. <laughs> if any of you have been watching my channel for a while and you remember seeing any of these videos when they came out, then please make yourself known in the comments because I owe you a huge thank you for sticking with me and getting us to this point. Right now I'm really focusing on pouring a lot of design advice into the marketing design book I'm writing. You can find out more about that uh, by joining my email list, which will be linked in the description. So you might see more vlogs on this channel, more like, I don't know, casual fun videos like this. Definitely more live streams as well, because those are fun to make and very easy, as opposed to like more prepared advice videos for the next little while, as I focus my efforts and my time and attention on that book, which I hope will be worth the trade-off in the end. Thanks for watching today and I'll see you in future videos. Bye!